Bismillah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Mind Heist, episode 82. With, with the man. The man. man. The man of the moment. And me. <laughs> yeah, bro. Actually, you know, um, I don't know why I thought of this now, but, uh, you know, have you heard of the thinking Muslim? No. So... I think it was a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned I was doing this online course with the thinking Muslim, where it's like comparing the Islamic worldview, the liberal, liberal worldview and the socialist worldview. Mm. And it was like five weeks, five sessions kind of thing. And uh, after doing that episode and talking about it, on, on, I mean, on this uh, podcast, then it turns out the, the, the guy, the, the professor, yeah, he's a professor at uni, um, his son listens to our podcast. So then he told his dad about it and then his dad got in touch with me. So he invited me onto their podcast um, to talk about like uh, masculinity and the, the kind of research I'm doing on that topic. So that should be good, bro. Inshallah, it's going to be tomorrow. And mm. uh, I've got to say, man, he, he sent me a few points he wants to cover and uh, it's very well thought out, definitely. Um, and I, I think, I always think it makes a big difference, man. Like, and rather than, like you can have spontaneity in the conversation, but you want to have some structure you know and i think he's really thought things well out so mm. looking forward to that man like he's he's pl you can see with the kind of things he's thinking of he's playing devil's advocate he's questioning things so should be good inshallah mm. should he's be good. thinking huh he's yeah thinking. yeah deep thinker <laughs> thinking muslim it's like uh i guess it's kind of you know more intellectual vibe that's what I, it's all about uh, but yeah. it's needed. It seems good so far what they're putting out. And um, they got a podcast, so they got quite a few episodes actually by now, whether it's more of an interview thing. Um, and uh, doing a few courses on these kind of topics that I already mentioned. And yeah, it's good, man. I think uh, I'm, I'm always more of a, you know, I suppose my nature is actually to be in the ivory tower. Like if you think of like I've done, I've been to uni multiple times and all of that. And, you know, I like to read and all that stuff, but I, I actually really do think the real change happens on the ground with the people in the trenches, you know? Yeah. So I always aim to kind of think of how I can contribute on that side, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely, bro. Do you find yourself interacting with a lot of people outside of your family? Yeah, I just got a few close friends, man. That's about it. Um, let me think. Uh, you know, actually, actually, the biggest place where I interact with different people is when I do sales calls for my company. Um, and it's like, mm. I mean, last few months, it's been every day speaking to two, three different people. So uh, I definitely, you know, get a flavor and get a vibe of what people are on. Uh, then we also have coaching on our program. So I coach people through their business and stuff. So that's probably the biggest area where I interact with people who are not necessarily my friends. Um, and oh, that's, yeah. I guess a bit of an eye opener how people just are. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess so. Okay, bro, let's jump one. into the topic. Yeah, of course. So, so a few weeks ago, when the whole Black Lives Matter kind of, uh, I don't want, don't know what to call it really. Uh, I hesitate to call it a movement because I feel like uh, there is an, a movement, an element of a movement, but it was more of the hype resurfacing, right? Uh, because I think there have been hypes and then troughs over the last few years, and it kind of resurfaced recently. So yeah. that was like two, three, four weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I said I didn't really want to talk about too much at that time when the emotions, are, uh, tension is high, etc. The thing is, now that I, I want to talk about it this week, my emotions are not high either. I'm not like passionate about it either. But yeah. it's uh, still an important topic um, because... I mean, inshallah, maybe we can, we can bring a different perspective because, I mean, you, you tell me what you think, but I, uh, from what I've seen is the general mainstream uh, view uh, from Muslims and non-Muslims is just pretty much uh, jumping into the movement and really supporting it and uh, denouncing racism and uh, uh, really pointing out, for example, uh, the contributions of uh, black people to Islamic civilization and to other civilizations as well. Um, mm. There's been a lot of that. Uh, there have been, of course, uh, certain people who uh, resist it. Like uh, I follow, I subscribe to one like uh, right-wing uh, YouTube channel. So, of course, they've been uh, 
very clear to show that they are not really on board with it. But other than that, I mean, everyone seems to be on board with it for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. And there've been some, some good uh, like content created around it. actually a few like different podcast episodes from Muslims that is. Um, but yeah, is that your kind of view of, of the reaction, especially from Muslims in the West? It's a very uh, divisive area. It, I think um, I think a lot of it is quite sort of just. It's I hate to say it, but I feel like it's quite aimless in the sense it just sort of it's anger just thrown out into all these different directions without any real control. I mean, when I look at previous movements that have called for social justice like this, like I don't know, Michael Max and and and. Um, Mm -hmm. and uh uh martin luther, martin luther king um i felt like they were very because they had leadership this is the thing yeah because they had leadership like very direct leadership you could see their leadership you could see what they wanted to achieve and where they were heading and like the goal with something like this everybody's tugging at different sort of angles and different agendas like mm. you haven't just got black lives matter you've also got um black trans lives matter which i've seen a lot or trans lives in general or um different elements of um like there there is it's just from what a lot of people i've i've, I've sort of engaged with with this topic it's like okay what do you want like mm. i'm not saying that in a derogatory area right? i'm just like okay what what we what's, mm, what's, what's different mm. what do you want today that you didn't have yesterday sort of thing or where, where are we heading especially locally um yeah. because america's a bit of a yeah, America's a bit of a different kettle of fish. Um, mm. America, we had the direct sort of, you know, incident that sparked it off. But then we had all of these protests and stuff happening in the UK. Yeah. So it's like, okay, yeah. let's, let's, let's talk about what, what's going on in the UK then. Let's, mm. We can't just start, because we're globalized, we can't just start throwing our rage at America at systems in the UK. Yes. I'm not saying yeah. that there aren't any issues in the UK. I'm saying mm. let's be direct. Let's be yeah. quite focused. Yeah. Second thing is, and I had this, I had a bit of this discussion with my sister because uh, she's quite passionate about it. However, I was saying um, we are very, you know, it's easy to go and pick up the flipping protest thing and, and get on the streets and stuff. But what actual real changes are you doing in terms of engaging the system? Yeah. Um, what you're really doing is complaining about leadership, right? And you're complaining to the leadership that you believe is racist about the changes that you believe should be made. However, it's like, it's like begging them it's like begging those that you despise to do you a favor. Yeah. You know, when actually it's a, it's the long and hard battle for any, for any movement, for any movement is engaging in that system. Like they're like, Oh, you know, they say F the system or break the system or defund the police or break this or do that. But mm -hmm. you're still calling upon those that are in charge who you already believe are biased yeah. against you Yeah. to do, do you a favor. You yeah. know, it's like asking, you know, if you believe Boris Johnson is racist, right, hypothetically, not even hypothetically, there's evidence to suggest that he may be, you know, based on statements he's made, etc. Mm. But then you're, you're like, sort of begging him to, or, you know, trying to pressure him into making changes. It doesn't matter. He's still the seat. He's still on mm. that seat. He's still on that. So it's about the long, hard struggle for change, as opposed to the quick fixes. Um, and that's always the case with any era of protesting or anything that's like look at the arab spring for example or look at anything anything where there's sort of there's elements of um corruption or elements of like bias or elements of oppression we i i just feel like nobody wants to play the long game and i'm not saying like the the you know the black empowerment movement doesn't play the long game it has done and they've mm. and it's come so far in in you know in since what it used to be um so that element of it, well, I think it's because there's no real leadership and because there is this element of like, like look at the Black Lives Matter actual, not the, the movement in general, but the actual organization itself, because there is an organization. And then go and go yourself as a Muslim and look at what they're supporting and what they stand for, where that yeah. money goes. Yeah. Right? There's already issues about where the money is going that people are like, okay, so where is this money going that people are donating? Because we're, you know, what, who said that you, who's, who's organizing where this money goes? You know, even before, if you think about, the Nation of Islam, right? Back in Malcolm X's time. Yeah. If you donated to the Nation of Islam, you know you were donating to the Nation of Islam, right? I'm not saying you agree with that or whatever, but you know your money's going in. Well, 
One second, bro. Uh, I can't hear you anymore. I don't know if it's me or you. Let me see. Can you hear me, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Go on. Um, I was saying, even if you look at the nation of Islam, nation of yeah. Islam was pretty much a religion. Yeah. Um, so there was an element of organization. There's an element of, you know, where your money's mm. going. And, and a clear leader. Yeah. And a clear message as well. And a clear, yeah. you know. Uh, and because the, the waters are murky now, like before yes. you had black and white, um, like when I say black and white, I mean like clear cut oppression or clear cut, you know, just came out of apartheid in some areas and you knew, you knew what you were fighting against. Now it's like, it's almost like this murky sort of, yeah. You can't put your finger on what it, I mean, yeah. you could put your finger on the police brutality, but the police brutality is something that exists across the board mm -hmm. as opposed to necessarily with black people. Yeah. Although it does exist heavily with black people. I haven't mm. seen, you can't say it doesn't exist outside of that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It does exist outside of that. Yeah. Black people, it, yeah. it exists outside of that. It may be disproportionately against black people. Yeah. And I'm not going to argue that it doesn't. It isn't. Mm. Talk about Although the, I, the American statistics. What, what I've seen is that's even questionable, right? Um, mm. Because, uh, like you're saying, the police in the US have issues, right, in, in general, okay? Mm. Um, the way they, the, the, their general attitude, you can tell, the attitude is a very confrontational attitude mm -hmm. and the way that they prioritize dealing with things is a certain way um but what i've seen is maybe i'm wrong like right but i i just think we should question firstly is it a racist thing or is it a just a police a policing you know mm -hmm. bad policing and, and if you uh if you study any sort of any basic psychology i mean i remember studying psychology at a level mm. and there's this um famous study i can't remember if it was like the zimmerman study or something along those lines where they basically tested this authority thing where they basically got university students it was quite an old study and it actually got i think it got sort of not outlawed but they got called off because it basically became too much they got all these university students um people might know what i'm talking about already they might be able to correct me if i'm wrong they're all sort of same level, same everything, all volunteered. And then some of them were given authority over the others for, I don't know how long, maybe a week. Maybe oh, yeah. More than that. Mm. And uh, some had to play the police, the role of the police. Some had to play the role of like prisoners. And then over time, they realized that there was this ego developing within the, mm. those that are in, in power to the mm. point where the, the detainees were absolutely miserable. And this was all mm. a study, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it's, it's a door that opens to oppression. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, it's something that exists. And I know people say you can't have any bad apples in this, in this role or in this particular organization. However, there are certain things that exist uh, within any sort of groups, group dynamics, for example, that I think are just, I don't know how you would eliminate them, you know? Now, who what says I you say, can't have bad apples in the police? So that's what people call for. That's what people call yeah. for. People say that this is a job yeah. where there can't be mm. any bad apples. Isn't that ridiculous? You know? Because pick any random group, like let, pick any group of a thousand people, let's say. Yeah. It's nearly impossible to not have bad apples in that group. Mm. Okay. I'll be unless, honest. You know what? Unless the group is like specifically picking like yeah. pious people or something, right? So the so, American yeah. system of, mm. of, of, of hiring police or the, the actual policing system in America itself. When I, when I've looked into it, compared it to what we have in the UK, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous, bro. Yeah. Like it's, there is just so many like things that just go unchecked. Yeah. So many, so many hoops that we jump through mm. in the UK that just do mm. not exist there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. To the point where it's almost like the wild West, like even yeah. the people that they're hiring, it's just mm. the wild West. Bro. It's like, I heard that they it, hire a lot of ex military people. Yeah, and that itself, that itself, may speak more about the culture. But the hiring process, like, there's no real vetting. There's mm. no real even even um, because there's so many different sort of police departments. Then even the organisational structure of where things go and where things yeah. get referred to, etc. Mm. It's just it's just. And messy. I guess when it's decentralised like that, exactly. it's easier yeah. to have 
corruption, you could say, right? Because exactly. it's a small group of people and you all have to see each other on the way into work every day. And so you don't want to snitch on so-and-so because he's going to see you the next day and, and all of that. And there's teams, bro. Like any sort of team element mm. um, creates a rivalry, mm. right? Like you can have rivalries in the same city based on just a different team that right. takes off, takes takes over you. Like when you when you book mm. off, like mm. even to that level, mm -hmm. um, the moment you divide people, you've got you've got teams. Let yeah. alone if it's a completely different sort of department, a completely different mm. force, a completely different. Yeah. Um, so there's that, that unity element. One thing I did read about was um, I read in the UK there was a Black Lives Matter protest and one of the people they interviewed was a ex-police officer from London I believe and they were talking about the culture of policing in the UK mm. and a lot of the stuff they were talking about was very like I see daily like I'm like okay yeah I get that that makes sense some of it is like the culture of being cool so you could have somebody who what you would want to be you would want them to be the, the police officer which is like by the books, very like, I love mm. my job. I want to serve the people. I want to blah, 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 blah. Mm. And then that is just seen as like, okay, you need to chill out. Like, there's too much. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, it sounds, as... sounds like anywhere, really. It sounds like yeah. th there's that kind of attitude, isn't it? Like, like, why do you have to be the good guy? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'd argue there's a lot of things that police in general have been made to do because of funding and all that stuff that they don't actually need to deal with it shouldn't be something they deal with mm. and the passion for the stuff that matters dwindles because there's so much that so much you could argue that it just isn't a police job that you deal with yeah. every single day mm. that and you just have you're just basically run to the ground because of it mm. that the the enthusiasm for anything meaningful is kind of gone mm. um Especially when, like, and, and ultimately, what I keep, what I was, what I say, and I say this to my, I say this to everyone that I meet. My mom says I use this word too much, but it's all about exposure. Yeah? I said it, <laughs> said it last episode, I think. But I feel like there needs to be a lot more transparency. I think we, like, police don't talk about they all. They've got this PR thing, right? And I hate this PR thing. I don't think it's a job that should have PR. I think it's a job that that you should be able to, 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 to talk to a public servant, right, about th them without them having to go through PR to do so. Because I think, uh, I understand, yes, there's, you know, you have to manage an organization. It has to, you don't want all of your employees or your staff saying whatever they feel or yeah. whatever. But because of that, it gets rid of this human element. Mm -hmm. This human element disappears, right? Yeah. And I think, people don't engage officers don't speak they don't they feel like there's this mm -hmm. um I, I felt at work bro like the biggest thing like i'm i seem to be known as the person that de-escalates things right i'm known amongst my my colleagues as the de-escalator how does a I, north african be the one who de-escalates i know <laughs> but because because i'll tell you exactly why i think it's because and I'm not boasting and I'm not bragging. Well, while our deen, I think it's something to do with our deen, bro. I think it's our deen has taught us the importance of patience. Okay. Mm. And I think I see things more long term. And when I say long term, I'm talking about like al you know, I'm mm. talking about judgment day, you know. So when somebody is being abusive or aggressive or whatever, I, th I don't think about my haq right now. I think about my haq back like later on, mm. you know. Okay. Um, and, and I think the general, the, you know, the normal, I say normal, but the, the, the everyday individual that works in these organizations in any sort of law enforcement doesn't think like that. They get annoyed now, you know, mm -hmm. they lose their temper. Now this is, this mm. is, this is it. Mm. Um, because of that, you haven't got patience for people. Mm -hmm. And you need to remember, like we, we live in a society where there isn't this culture of like, if you just see any video of somebody detained on the floor, mm. you're like, Oh, that person's the victim. Like the mm. person on the floor is the victim yeah. without any context to what's happening. Yeah. And, That's part and of I the think, culture, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll give you a story. Do you want a story? Uh, <laughs> story this time. Story happens. This happened uh, three days ago, all right? I was off work. I was driving home after I saw my mum. And as I'm driving home, actually, I'm on the seafront. 
I just hear this loud bang behind me, yeah? Um, and I look in my rearview mirror, and there's a BMW just smashing into other cars, Ooh. like trying to get through other cars like that. And behind it is like an undercover police vehicle, like wow. tracing it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, the next car in line is me. So I pull over. As I pull over, three people jump out of the car, jump out of this BMW and start, two of them start running towards the beach and police officers start chasing. These are undercover firearms officers, the ones oh. that have the guns. Yeah. <laughs> they start chasing them to, to, towards the beach. And then yeah. I just see this other guy on his own running like towards me and he's, mm. nobody's chasing him, nobody knows. Okay, I just, I just tripped him up and tackled him to the floor. Yeah. And I'm obviously not wearing anything protective. I've just got, oh, I've just got my um, you know, water bottle. Really, yeah, I want to really drink. <laughs> just got my civilian clothes on. Anyway, as I'm like grabbing this guy, like trying to, to sort of hold him, I notice he's got something tucked in his. He's topless, so he's got. You can see his boxes. He's got something tucked in his boxes, and I'm like, he's got a phone in his hand as well. And I'm like, oh. Is that a knife? Like, I can't tell. Like, that's where people keep knives. Mm. I'm like, he might have a weapon. Mm. And I'm, I then squeeze his arms as tight as I could. Because the last, because I'm holding him like that from behind. So his arms are like mm. behind it. I'm like, I don't want his hands anywhere near his waistband. Mm. I haven't got any kit on me. Mm. I'm, I'm now tussling with this person behind my car. So mm. I'm already below everybody's sight line. Mm. And, um, and obviously I'm on my own. Nobody knows I'm here. And I'm shouting at members of the public, call the police mm. to let them know that I'm here with this person. Mm. And everybody's just standing filming, bro. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's standing around filming. Yeah. And I'm just like, you've got to be joking. I'm <laughs> wrestling with this guy and I'm just like, this, this is it. Yeah. Because people just see a movie, bro. They just see things and then they think, some people think, oh, look, that kid he's grabbing is what, 17 years old, you know? But the they didn't even think, know. They they didn't even know. Like you could have just been two guys fighting, surely. Yeah, exactly. So that was my concern. So then yeah. I thought, well, you could you could see there's something happen. You could see two police cars, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a crash and all this stuff. And eventually, someone starts coming over, and I'm like, this the, the vibe I'm getting from this person is that he thinks we're fighting and he's going to break us up. Mm. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I can't have that, especially if I think he's got a weapon. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I managed to get, I managed to hold, keep hold of his both his arms and get my ID out at the same time. Yeah. Because I got my ID out, some 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 lad came up to me. He's oh, do you want some help? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> but, but we managed to hell yeah, we managed to put him to the ground. But there's a video that was floating on the internet of me yeah. restraining this this guy. Did you go and viral, bro? No, not too viral. But did, did you there. did you become a meme? No, bro. Oh, no. But my, I had my knee on the guy's legs. Yes. Um, and in the video, you can hear him saying, oh, he's, so police officers eventually came to help me. And then they go, he go, the, the guy on the floor goes to the, one of the officers. Says, oh, can you tell him? Yeah. And can you tell me? Oh, can you tell him to get his knee off my legs? It really hurts. Mm. Right. And I'm like, it's, I, I noticed him saying that and I just adjust my knee slightly and mm. then he goes, thanks man. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's fine. And that's, that's, that's understandable. However, mm. if you take that screenshot, it just looks like we're on top of this guy, mm. not knowing the context, not knowing he's got, yeah. you know, I believe he didn't have a knife on him in the end. He had another phone in his waistband. But I didn't know that. The like, trap phone. Yeah. yeah. Something else. <laughs> but um, what I'm saying is it was the fact that, that everybody just had their phones out mm. and there's no there's, and it's there's no, issues. It's not like there is, it's the community against a criminal or a potential criminal. It's mm. like there's the police party. There's, it's like the community against the police more like, isn't it? But I, I think it's, it's a problem from both angles. And I think the biggest angle is that police or law enforcement aren't mm. transparent enough. Yeah. Yeah. They're not transparent about their methods. Mm. They're not, Although they've got, I think they've, they've done a lot in terms of, uh, you know, like, I don't know if you ever watched those like police documentaries and stuff. 
at least the, the UK ones tend to be okay. There must be the, like thousands of hours of those shows in I England. I know. <laughs> the police, the UK ones tend to be all right. They're not too bad. Mm. The Americans ones are a bit like movie Proper drama, bit. man. Yeah. But what needs to be done is like these, these are people that work for you, mm-hmm. right? Or work to serve you. Yeah. Their methods and their reasoning and their justifications need to be transparent, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, because yeah. I... People say that I might be biased, but I was exposed to a different side of viewing things mm. once I was obviously exposed to this life than I was beforehand. Mm-hmm. And now things make sense. Like, for example, you might see someone, you might see an incident where someone just gets absolutely flawed immediately, right? And you think, what the hell? They weren't resisting, blah, blah, blah. But you don't know what information was received about that individual beforehand, right? Even if that information is turns out later to be incorrect. That's the only information we have. That's the mm. only information we've been told. Yeah. So, and you also have this thing where it's like, people assume that, oh, we, you know, because we're in this job, we, you know, we've signed up to basically risk our lives all the time. So yeah, deal with it. So what, you know? Mm. So what, he may have a knife or he may have a firearm on him or he may be a fighter or he may be this or he may be that. Um, it's like, it's like, yeah, you, you, you put yourself at risk, so expect a risk. Try and mm. deal with someone gently. Deal with every single person you ever go to gently and softly and whatever. Mm. Mm. You know what, bro? The, what separates the, the real people who are trying to help, I think, and, and make things better versus the just literally, what do they call them? The armchair critics or whatever, yeah? The difference is that the people who are genuinely trying to help, they come with solutions. And mm. those people who are just moaning, they actually won't give you solutions because the thing they moan about, if they thought about deeply, they'd realize, oh, there is no easy solution for this. So you know? I, I that's, argued. That's what makes a difference. I, I argued culturally, you've got, this, you've got this organization across the board, across, across countries that is mainly and predominantly white. Mm. Okay. Now, with that comes the culture. So the culture is like at least in England is very British culture. And in terms of British, I'm talking about like pub culture. I'm talking about football culture. I'm mm. talking about white men's culture. Yeah. Yeah. A white men's culture. And even women that are involved are also engaged in that, you know, yeah, especially so it's still if it's a male dominated environment. Yeah. 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 So, so my argument was like, okay, you want them to understand you. You don't understand. You as an individual are not engaged in, in you, let's say if you're a black ethnic minority, whatever, you know, black Asian ethnic minority, you're not necessarily engaged in white culture. That's not part of your, you don't choose to be engaged in that. You don't really show an interest. Yeah. You've got your own thing going on. Yeah. But you want them, the, I'm talking mm. about the police who are predominantly this yeah. culture to accept and understand yours. Your yeah. Culture, right? yeah, yeah. Now that isn't going to happen because that's not something they can even do. It's not something they're going to be welcomed. Like even if they try to, they're posing. That's just the bottom line. Like, mm. even if you tried to, Tokenism. you would see through that. You'd see it's, it's that's just the way it is. Mm. So what do you need to do? What, what's required? Well, what is required is for more people of black and ethnic minorities um, to engage within that organization so that they can then understand and be representatives of the culture that they, they are, they're from. Maybe educate their colleagues and stuff. Oh, it's not even, yeah, it's not even just about yeah. educating. It's just about the dynamics of the organization. Yeah. Needs to but, but you could argue that... Injection. You could argue that like UK is like 90 whatever percent white. Yeah. So the police will always be like 90% white or 80% white. So it's more oh, about yeah. the white people understanding other people. But I get your point as well that if you basically do like you would like to be done to. So mm. understand where the police are coming from. Understand where it's, whatever white people are coming because from. Because people don't. Actually, I, I just feel like people don't want to step up to the plate in that sort of sense. Yeah, exactly. They don't yeah. want to be, they mm. want solutions, but they don't mm. want to do the, the, yeah. the hard, real mm. yeah. solutions. To and that, sometimes to it's problem. hard to think that way when, you know, you're looking at oppression of your people or whatever. It, it, you know, no, it's, it's that's hard understandable. on the Yeah, that's but, understandable. But the but, pioneers, have, pioneers have always found things hard, bro. And yes, that's yeah. the argument. Yeah, and they like, do it anyway. Yeah. They do it anyway. And I think, actually, I've seen changes, you know, I mean... I'm in this, I'm in the, I'm, I'm you see like, changes, but all I see is racist faces. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, that's a mind heist, uh, gold star moment that, um, 
but I, I see the benefit that I've injected into an mm. organization just okay. by being mm. Mm, and holding on to mm. who I am. Very interesting. As opposed to diluting melting myself. into the melting pot. Exactly, because I've seen organize, I've seen people that have, I've, I you know I've seen Muslims that have engaged in that organization, mm. not where I am, but elsewhere mm. that yeah. have just become that. Mm. You know, yeah, because because and it, they. Do you think you need to play the role of the weirdo outsider to to keep the way you are and not melt into the fabric of it? Um, I think only because there isn't others like me. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no one from mm. my background. So I feel like, mm. yeah, and because mm. of my dean, I feel like, mm. yes, I'm loud and proud about it. Yeah. And I always do that anyway to establish what I accept and what I don't. Yeah. Because I don't want to be dragged what, into pop That's culture, what I've always experienced. Outing. Like when I went to uni in the UK, uh, day one, basically, people knew I'm weird, right? You know, weird from their point of yeah. view. Um, and I just always felt like I have to make that known. Um, and then from day two, three, four, we know our boundaries and stuff, and then we can kind of get on without the being, but what, I, what other people might do is they half try and fit in, but then they still have their boundaries. And so no, neither party knows what is acceptable, what the boundaries are for each person, you know? But as mm. for me, I go in there day one, okay, you're a woman, I don't shake your hand. You're a woman, I don't really yeah, talk yeah. to you. <laughs> you know, at all. Yeah. So um, that I've, I've actually found, uh, I found success with that in terms of, I never, like, never or rarely had to compromise on my values. But at the same time, it means I never uh, created those relationships with those people around me, you know, in yeah. the class or in the workplace. Um, but that's kind of just what I was, I, I'm with, that's what I'm willing to do. I'm not really willing to really mix beyond that. I'm friendly, but they just know this guy, he don't really want to talk to me. Basically. Mm, mm. I'll tell you what though, let's, let's back up a little bit from, cause we've zeroed in on policing. Yes. Uh, yes. So I wanted to actually terms- go, go. I wanted to go back here, bro. If you don't mind. Yeah. The, the, I wanted to get, get something clear actually about this whole thing. My, my thoughts on it is that, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know if it's, dis- it's disappointing is the right word, but, there's a, there's a lot of following going on. There's a lot of uh, sheep behavior. Mm. Um, nobody questioning, uh, like you're saying, the organization. Yeah, Nobody is, is looking at that, what, what's on the about page, what's on the uh, values, what we believe in. Uh, people are not going there and scrutinizing that. And that's an easy thing to do. So what about the harder things to do? Like, you know, for example, everyone's doing the black uh, screenshot thing uh, on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I'm not saying don't do it, but uh, my problem is doing it because everyone's doing it rather than because yeah, you have a you, you've thought about it and and all of that. Uh, it's just like even even, you know, I was, I was talking about the, you know, in the Premier League when they start starting a game and now they're yeah. kneeling, right? They're yeah. kneeling before every match. And, you know, this kind of stuff, it's like, of course, like everyone's against like racism, but. What are you really doing? Like now that mm. it's a hype, it's kind of a, a way to say, yeah, we're doing it. Everyone's doing it. Like everyone's doing it. Every company is posting the black picture. Uh, the Premier League, like, every team is kneeling and all of that. Obviously, yeah. if you don't, if you don't kneel, or oh, now you're like, you must be racist, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. so all of that, basically, what I'm saying is too much following, not enough thinking critically. And even when it comes to like the Algerian protest movement, which was like uh, I don't know, like a year ago now. Even something like that, which seems to be, you know, positive, you kind of have to just wait a bit and see how it plays out, see who's behind it and, and really just calculate things, you know, rather than jumping on. And that's why I really wish Muslims would do more of is less sheep attitude, more thinking and just being patient before making any move, you know, and honestly, and also being confident that, oh, if I didn't post the, the black picture thing, that doesn't make me racist. If you think I'm racist because I didn't post that, you're so dumb that I don't even need to talk to you. <laughs> mm. Kind of, you know? Mm. It's, um, I, I think some of the most important things that have come out of it, some of the things I see are benefits, especially the recent ones, is the education of what is still there from the, the more ingrained sort of institutional racism, whatever you want to call it. Like, the statues, for example, like the whole statue phenomenon, I yeah. found that really, really fascinating because mm. 
there are things and symbols that we walk past every day that we don't know what. And I, I found like that Edward Colston one in, in Bristol, for example. Mm. Um, I found that absolutely. I even did a little poster on, on Instagram for that because I found that absolutely um, fascinating. How mm. like okay, you've got you've got this whole city that was well, this this area of the city that was actually built like by this sort of this sort of money if you know what i mean from mm. this slave trade system you've got street names named after him you've got museums or whatever it was off, uh, like a hall or something mm. after him and then you've got this statue itself right by the harbor where slaves were essentially docked mm. and put you know and basically sold and stuff mm. and the poetic justice of it all of him of the statue being torn down and then pushed into that very very river mm-hmm. a very sorry i don't even know was it a sea is it i don't know what it, what the probably was. river at bristol in it Mm. Yeah, and I just thought, wow, that's that's powerful. And mm. I think they did the right thing by taking it out and putting it in a museum and leaving all that graffiti on it that they've because that mm. yeah, sure. People don't realise that we're in history now, like we mm. make history as we go along. History yeah. isn't just what happened a mm. hundred years ago, it's mm. now mm. and yesterday yeah. and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um but that education is is fundamental and I think education is I think the biggest change that needs to come, Matthew, because we, we live in a generations now where like the average person isn't racist like the average person was before, you know, because of exposure, because of cultural mixing, because we've had mixed schools, mixed environments, even, you know, not, not promoting this, but even like the general population, even the music they listen to is, is of a mixed nature. Do you understand? Like the cultures they expose themselves to is mixed. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of stuff comes from older generations. Uh, also te- those older generations teaching their kids, but I think that stuff will get watered down uh, with time. But once again, there needs to be more engagement. Like these schools, for example, that the top politicians come out of, like Eton and whatever, at least in the UK, like they need they need overhauls, bro. They need overhauls like public schools needed overhauls, you know, in the same way that public schools now are like just mixed, bro. People have exposures and that. people mix each other, different cultures. Mm. Those top top institutions need um, need that sort of mix in. But it takes people to work hard to get to the top, even if they're underprivileged, you know, even if, if it's an uphill battle, it takes strong pioneers to do the hard work to open doors for other people. And I know mm. that isn't fair. I know mm. that isn't fair, but that's just the way life is at the moment. We can't just turn around and say to the, those who are already in power, hey, do me a favor, open doors for me. No, you yeah. need to climb that hill. And we live in, a, we live in times of comfort actually, where we just think that, yeah, we live in the 21st century. We expect things to be open yeah. for us and easy for us and given yeah. to us. But yeah. we still live in, in, in times of... Another thing, another thing, bandwagoning, right? Mm. Bandwagoning, again. We cannot be, as Muslims, especially Muslims that aren't, like, you know, we're North African, actually. We can't be oblivious to our own prejudices and our own crimes and our own... Um, like, we're, we're sitting here, actually, talking, like, in the streets, talking about Black Lives Matter, but our own families have racist, like racist tendencies in them like why can't you know why can't uh your i don't know your family accept a a, a black person in their in their family as like a, in terms of marriage or in terms of whatever do you understand what i'm trying to say like why have we got that within us still why is that a thing out of us all the people in the world us who have the dean that actually black you know black and white says it you know no an arab is not better than a non-arab etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm. And, and we can't fix our own homes first, Lachie. And we're ignorant to our own crimes and we're ignorant to our own prejudices. And we think yeah. we fall into this trap here mm. where it's like, oh, yeah, we, we you know, we, we're also uh, victims of racism and, and mm. et cetera, et cetera. Like, uh-huh. Of course we are. Yeah, yeah, of course. Islamophobia and that. Yeah, sweet. Of course we are. I get you, brother. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, don't beg it. Like, let's not beg it. <laughs> you know, let's let's be real. Let's mm. let's let's not invalidate people's experiences. Yeah. So that's the, one. The, the other element of following was the fact, like you said, you alluded to this that the American this started in America, right? This whole hype. Yeah. And that's why I say hype because anyway, yeah, it started in America and America has its own society with its own laws and its own issues, its own politics. And it doesn't necessarily reflect on the rest of the world. I find it very troubling that something is going on in America where they have big problems in so many areas of their society. And then for some reason, people in, I think it was like Egypt or somewhere they were doing like, protests like black lives matter protests for me that level of just following is is worrying 
you know mm -hmm. uh even though i i understand the sentiment i agree with the sentiment but that level of something bad is happening in america we're going to protest in egypt or in england mm -hmm. or in germany or you know that's for me uh troubling because uh, like you're saying i i the way i see uh, the way we should be ideally is that we're muslims right we have our own values uh, that we believe in. We don't need uh, the, this Black Lives Matter to remind us of things. We don't need a Black History Month to remind us of things. But yet, this is the, the position we're in now where uh, mm -hmm. things are happening in other, whether it's in other countries or other yani, parts of society. And that is what is making people post things on social media and this and that. I, I just... I. I Maybe, you know, I don't do it myself. There, there are a thousand uh, issues to bring up. Um, and I suppose, I don't know, but uh, why, why I don't specifically like dedicate, I don't know, like a YouTube video or whatever to this mm. topic. But, but, but ultimately, I, I just don't like the following. And so it, it always makes sense more for me to, okay, you saw the Black Lives Matter thing happen wait two months and make sure you, because you, it is a genuine issue, then yeah. deal with it, right? Just to avoid being a follower, you know? Uh, that, that's a big I, thing I, for me. I, I think I come at it from a slightly different angle. Mm. Um, that's fine. I think, I think if, you've, if you've joined it, like joined, I don't know if you want to call it a hype, but whatever, but join the, you know, the movement at its current stage, yeah. then I think if you want to tread this path, then tread it forever. You know, mm, yeah, sure. If you, yeah. Want, if you want, if you like, want yeah, to this, do this, this could awaken something in you that you yeah, didn't yeah. really realize. Yeah, that's true. Be, yeah. be in this for the long run, be mm. in this until you get what you want. Like, don't dip in and out of, of what's popular. You know? Yeah, 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 exactly. Because how, be how sincere is that? Yeah, how sincere be about is that? It. We're, we're gonna see all these companies that were posting the black picture and all that. Look at them, bro. Like, Oh no, the companies can do one, bro, because it's just a PR stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, look at them in six months or whatever, and look at their practices. Uh, you know, if they have any practices which should be changed or whatever, look, look how uh, the real, genuine change, if it's happening or not. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing is like, and this is the shame, and this happens in the Muslim community with Islamophobia as well. Um, and I, I want to talk about it, even though it's a bit controversial. I, I need to bring it up. I think there is an element. Of self victimization when it comes to incidents that have nothing to do with racism, but we make it about racism or Islamophobia or something because we fall into the victim trap, right? And I'll give you an example. I had somebody come into work, uh, their car was seized. You're right. Okay. That's okay, bro. I paused it. Go on. Okay. So, um, I don't know what point you paused it, but I was talking about self victimization and. Yes. Um, this is what happens when the individual only thinks about themselves, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this individual came into work, uh, uh, and he was he was a black he was a black man, right? And he had uh, I think he had a family member with him and a child. Um, anyway, his car got seized driving without insurance, or whatever. He came to claim it after he fixed the paperwork, but he claimed that while it was seized, he'd sold it to his cousin who was. The lady that he brought with him mm. and when you come to pick up your car if it's been seized you need to bring certain documents with you one of the main documents is proof of ownership okay mm. so this person had brought his uh insurance uh contract and which you can insure any car like when i insure my car i don't need to prove i own it i just insure it and anyway insurance thingy and he brought a receipt like just a handwritten receipt that he bought it from someone or sold it to someone or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Something very, I was like, okay, where's your, you know, the V5, the O5 document thing. It's mm. that it's that logbook book thing. Stuff. It's basically the official oh, document you have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have it from like DVLA to prove that you own the vehicle. They yeah. send it to you. Yeah. It's okay. Where's that? That's like the main thing that you need to bring. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, some excuse. Some, anyway, there was something dodgy about it. Yeah. He didn't have, so I can't give him the car. So he just starts playing the race card, mm. you know. Oh, you're, it's because you're racist. It's because of this. It's because of that. Mm. And I was, I was just like, and I wanted to tell him. I really wanted to tell him in that moment, like you're invalidating everybody's genuine struggle. Like people that genuinely struggle with racism, you're yeah. invalid. You're you're in, you're watering it all down with this nonsense. Mm. Because in your selfish situation, you 
forgot or you there's something fishy going on here but because you're just dodging this whole thing about bringing the document because i don't think he owns the vehicle something's happened you know i don't i, I think he's basically trying to pull all over eyes it's not his vehicle whatever yeah you're trying to use racism as a as a justification for your own you know uh sorry Fade my dad up. was my dad was having surgery just now he's just texted me to say he's just come out alhamdulillah. oh alhamdulillah um yeah so sorry that's striking me yeah so and that happens with muslims as well like you have muslims that are like oh it's because you're islamophobic no you just acted a fool like you mm. did something stupid or but that's i'm not saying it doesn't exist of course racism exists of course islamophobia exists of course all these isms exist yeah. i'm saying don't be that don't be that guy yeah do not be that guy that jumps to the gun like you ideally you want to be 100 percent sure that you, someone's being racist towards you before you start throwing that because mm. it just makes you look weak if you mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. you know we're not we don't want to be victims the yeah. last thing we want is to to do this proponency yeah, like, yeah. perpetuate this yeah. victimhood mm. Mm. No, 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 no 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 yeah and that's something that like obviously i'm not black <laughs> okay obviously oh. <laughs> yeah i know i have to say it. no um <laughs> I'm, I'm not black uh, so and i I don't think I've uh, ever experienced racism, except it's funny when I, I was in uh, primary school in England, very, very, very briefly, I, I think for one year. And I think, I think because I was Muslim, yeah, they used to call me Paki, they, even though like, I'm obviously not Pakistani at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, South yeah. Asian. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider that racism. Um, so I've not really experienced racism. Right. I, I do. I, I do. Uh, experience uh i don't know what you call it uh, certain uh, disadvantages uh with being a muslim you know uh, for example i don't know entering the the uk with a beard and this and that um yeah. and and i actually uh, causes me anxiety to to yeah, go yeah, through yeah. that whole process um especially me because i'm i'm kind of an anxious person but also i'm a paranoid person so i'm just like oh yeah. but anyway so I understand that that's not going to mirror or be the same maybe as uh, especially African-Americans um, context, because uh, this is like hundreds of years, bro. Um, and there are so many things going on. I think when it comes to the Muslim thing, it's just since 9-11 and everything. Um, but mm. I, uh, I guess you get a flavor. And even those who are even uh, white non-Muslims, if they read into it enough, I think they will understand uh, what goes on in the psychology of someone mm. who is, you know, of a black person, basically, especially an African American person, um, and uh, so I, 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 I don't uh, fully like the whole thing of you don't get the struggle because you can kind of get a, a glimpse of the struggle, um, and yeah, there's just a, a kind of a cop out to say that it's, sometimes. It's um, the historical but, but the, baggage. Isn't yeah, the it, feelings, bro. The, the feelings you can't get. I don't think, and for, mm -hmm. you know, like. Uh, like if I tell you I, I'm, I'm anxious going through passport control or whatever, yeah? Like, yeah, I get it. If, if somebody never experienced that, even if they're Muslim, they might say, oh, you're overdoing it. But then I mm. say, no, no, this is my legitimate experience is because I'm Muslim and this and that. Um, but it's kind of subjective in the end. But I don't know what point I'm making here, but I think uh, when you look at, and that's why I think African-American uh, context is one thing uk black uh, context is another thing and it's all kind of s slightly different things I, I don't it's probably not accurate to bunch them all together but um african-american uh, struggle is is a big one bro because um they firstly i was gonna say it starts with slavery but obviously their history didn't start with slavery but that's kind of what they know. And so they've been robbed of the history before slavery, which is a very, very big problem. Yeah, yeah. Your, yeah. your identity, your confidence, everything, right? Then, uh, even just in the 80s, there was a whole, uh, they call it, was it the crack era, where the, the, these neighborhoods where uh, already there were bad neighborhoods where a lot of black people were living, uh, they, they flood it with drugs. So mm. that just keeps them down. Then the, there's the whole prison industrial complex keeps it down. It's it's so bad and it's so layered. It's really bad. And it's yeah. kind of an insult to that problem, the scale of that problem uh, over hundreds of years. And, you know, it, bro, even just 20 years ago, or maybe even less than that, there's new, uh, 
kind of a racist structures being put in place. And it's kind of a, a, an insult to that problem when you start, you know, putting black pictures on Instagram and saying, yeah, we're solving it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so what, what I think we need to think of a little, just Yanni, to, to provoke some thoughts here, is that if, if, if the mainstream, the media or these big companies or whatever it is, if they are pushing certain changes that are cosmetic and a very surface level, that could actually be taking away from the deep changes that need to happen, right? Mm. Um, mm. You get what I mean, right? Mm. So uh, we're all kneeling in the Premier League before we start a match, right? And that makes people feel good that we're doing something about it. But uh, the, the, the truth is that there's still those kind of structures in place. And that's where yeah. energy should be focused because that will make the biggest change. I mean, just starting with, and, and this is what I would do if I was African-American. I would try and teach my kids the fact that uh, their history, basically. Like yeah, the, of history, course, yeah. the history, not of, of black people. That's, that's kind of ignorant, just say black people. There's so many black people. But the history specifically of the people that, they were brought to America as slaves. Like, where do they come from? Oh, try and trace your lineage. Oh, we came from, you know, modern day, whatever, Senegal. Okay, the, Senegal has these tribes, these languages are spoken. And back then when uh, the slaves were being taken, this was what the country was like. Like, that's a really positive step forward. Mm. But the problem with that, of course, is that a lot of uh, the people maybe who are not educated on the, the parents, the young parents, African-American parents, maybe they don't know their history and they don't know the importance of teaching their kids that history. So it's very much compounded. Uh, mm. It's a big, a big problem, man. I mean, history in general is, is fascinating. I think, mm. I think we forget that we live in this blip, this blip of white supremacy, if you, if you want to call it that, where it's a blip really in the history of the world mm. that, Europe and America or America is even America is like the dominant superpower of the world. It's a blip, you know, yeah. and we, because we've living in that time, we think it's mm. been like this forever. Yeah. Yeah. Like we think this is it. Mm. No, it's a blip. It's, 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 it's like that now. And it won't be like that in a thousand years or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Whatever time. And, and mm. like, it, it, that's the most fascinating thing is like, look at how that structure was built. Like, look at how, like actually the empire was built on the slave trade, you know, mm. they're benefiting from like they benefit off the oppression of others and the colonization of others and the, you know, buying and selling of human beings and whatever mm. it is and doing all that work. And then once they've reached the top, they play the moral high ground. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. Um, oh, what you want to do that? No, you can't do that. What you want to use fossil fuels? No, 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 no. You can't use that either. Yeah, do you know what I mean? All these so. things that are like all these dirty tactics have got us to the top. We are mm. now out here. We're up here. We mm. get rid of that. We delete that from our history. Mm. And we're like, no, we, we got here because of our sheer strength and willpower. No, uh, bro. It's, this, no way bro, it's, yeah, it's the white intelligence, bro. <laughs> it's the white intelligence. Yeah, bro, loads of it, actually. We, you know, we whitewash history. We whitewash art. I mean, God, dip your, dip your toe into the, the ancient Egypt sort of uh, era of things. Like, obviously, ancient Egypt or the Egyptian sort of artifacts and stuff all just... Dis- I say discovered, but let's say rediscovered, rediscovered by, you know, English uh, archaeologists and stuff, whatever you want to call them. And then how like certain, only certain things were acceptable. Like how could a black civilization uh, or I don't know, it was mixed really, but how can a civilization that isn't white produce all of this? No, 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 no. Well, we need to whitewash it a little bit. You know, we're going to have a movie about ancient Egypt or let's get all the the main actors as, as white and, you know, and I know that's another thing and mm. that's another whole kettle of fish representation mm. in media and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you, we live in this dominant thing and, and sometimes we overdo it, I think, because we think we get angry. Like when it comes to the media thing, we get a bit angry and it's like, oh, we want the representation. We want this and that. You do realize like this is predominantly a white country. These mm. are predominantly, the West is predominantly white. It's almost like going to... I know it sounds really controversial, but it's like going to, to some Arab country and be like, oh, in your, in your soap operas, you need to have a mixed, you know, yeah. you need to have all, well, but everyone, yeah. like 99% of people are Arab. No, no, but yeah. you need to have a mixed thing. Yeah. Like, yes, I demand that. Yeah. It's not, I think what you should do is empower, you know, cr- if it's about the creative scene, empower creatives from all sorts of all around the world, you know, spread that stuff from all around the world. But to mm. make, to sometimes force, I'll give you a really, I'll give you a good example. How do you feel 
about like the St. George's flag. Like when you see the St. George's flag being waved, mm. does it does it does it rub you the wrong way a little bit? Does it make you feel a bit Maybe as opposed to like bit. someone see this is it, like and I've re- I've realized this, and even my family, like, we have this bit of this weird thing when we see someone waving the English flag. Like it's almost like, oh, they're racist. Do you know what I mean? Oh, no, I don't, I, mean, I don't feel like that. No, no. But I, I get that. And I don't mm. know if that's because of the EDL or because of mm. the conditioning, but I don't see people being patriotic in the UK. And if I see someone being patriotic in the UK, I'm like, oh, they're probably racist. Mm. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. However, how many people wave around Algerian flags in Algeria or Tunisian flags in Tunisia? Or, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, so it, it's, it's kind of going to another extreme, isn't it? It's, 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 it's 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 because it's we are it's like you can't be because of uh what what everybody knows is is racism that happens and certain structures in place which uh, are against xyz and blah 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 uh now it's like you can't be proud to be white or you can't be yeah. happy with being white so that's I another to, extreme isn't it i had to check myself i realized i was like basically one of our neighbors put up was putting up an english flag and i know yes i know he's sometimes a bit racist <laughs> he doesn't like immigrants and whatever but he's so perfectly couldn't... fine with me yeah totally fine with me. however he put the flag up right and we were like yeah. oh here we go mm. like look at him putting the flag up but then mm. i was like yeah but like we put the flag up in tunisia like we put that flag up, the tunisia flag up all the time well, tunisia's yeah. probably put the flag up in england <laughs> this is it so i'm like why does that irk me yeah why does that irk me? And yeah. what does that mean to me? Yeah. What it means to me and what I think it means to me is that I'm a Muslim and an Arab. And I'm not even Arab. I've realized I'm probably not even Arab, but I'm Muslim, right? In a, and I've created a bubble of a society within a society. Mm. And I have no real desire of engaging with, like mm. I'm not really interested in mixing and engaging with the wider mm. British mm. public. I'm not mm. really that. Like I'm nice, I'm amicable, I do my job, whatever. Yeah. But the moment I'm not at work, I'm mm. in my bubble. I'm not mm. mixing with non-Muslims. I'm not, but that's what they want. Like a lot of them want that. They're like, oh yeah, integration and mixing and blah, blah, blah. We're all one and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's the multicultural dream. Multicultural dream is that we're all mixing it together. Yeah, yeah. But that isn't for us, actually, because what that means to them is like, I, you come over and do Ramadan with me. I come over and do Bar Mitzvah with you or whatever mm. do you know what I mean? mm, like yeah. that isn't what we're about as muslims yeah. you know and that's so, that's very much me, the british model of multiculturalism yeah. isn't it it's like so um mixing uh and exchanging rather than each yeah. one separating and i think more in france uh maybe in america it's more people separate into their own areas because there's such a vast gap in 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 areas especially in america like in america you've mm. got areas are like, like like sharif for example like what was sharif explaining to us mm. like he's just in the middle of nowhere with a community mm. that community is untouched really from the pressures of and you get that in the uk bro if you if you go like people think about london birmingham manchester like they think about all these cities get out of the city go mm. into some rural areas and look at the way you're looked at do you know what i mean mm. like there are communities that exist outside of these cities mm. community like villages and whatever yeah go go there like walk through there as a Muslim mm. or as a black ethnic Asian ethnic minority. Like yeah. you get those looks, bro, because you're not part of that culture. Yes. You know, I and you a are a minority. That, and... That's what comes with being a, a part of a minority. Like you don't think that uh, in, uh, I don't know, uh, Ottoman uh, Syria or whatever, you don't think in Ottoman Syria, it, it was, it was different if you're a Muslim or a Jew or a whatever, Armenian Christian or whatever, you don't yeah. think it was different. It's hard here, bro, because it's depend- like Muslims need to ask themselves, what do they want? Do you want the multicultural dream, which is the only, it's either you're, you're going to in- integrate and engage and, and do that back and forth with cultures, because is it fair for you to tell them to accept you, but you won't accept them? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's a difficult is it? Thing. It's probably not. So what you need to do is be like, well, actually, you know what? I'm here. Am I here for the long run? Allah knows best. You know, the moment, uh, the moment, imagine, hypothetically speaking, the moment a beautiful Muslim country emerges that wants all the Muslims to come back and it's practicing the deen, blah, blah, and it gives you an invitation to come and live there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Are you going to be like, no? Mm. You're probably going to be like, yeah, go on then. Do you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> like, you'd, you'd be with your community and your people. Like, we, a lot of us are here not because of choice. The ones that came here with choice, 
not probably not necessarily that they had a reason they didn't just come here because they were sick of Islam do you understand what I mean or they came here maybe for other reasons however a lot of the Muslims that are practicing mm. here are deeply practicing here they're passionate about their deen in the West they were here without their choice they grew up as Muslims you know yeah uh, here because of their parents or whatever um that's why we have bubbles, bro. We have bubble communities. We like, you know, mm. why is it when I socialize, I only socialize with Muslims and I only talk about, you know, Islamic stuff and whatever. Mm. That's a bubble. Am mm. I going to bring a non-Muslim out with me to dinner? Mm. Probably not. If, unless it was a Dawa thing, <laughs> do you know what mm. I mean? Um, yeah. So it depends. What is the end goal? It's like, a difficult do, world, bro. Globalized world. I just feel, I, ultimately what I'm trying to say is like, I need to be honest with, people i need to be honest with yeah. myself mm, i'm being i'm yeah. trying to be honest with myself and say listen i'm not about this whole integration thing like mm. i'm gonna do me and as long as i can do me in peace then you do you but mm. if you want me to integrate like i'm not coming over and lighting the candles or whatever it is that you do i just i'm not yeah you know? you're gonna be, have our cake and eat it be a good citizen um but mostly just engage with your own community of people who share your values but, and but when but on top of that yeah what i'm trying to say is like mm. because of that we forget that we're mm. in someone oh, yeah, i want to say it true. we're in someone else's country i know it sounds really controversial but ultimately this is a christian not even a, this is a country predominantly the majority is not black asian or ethnic minority but especially not Muslim. That's the main thing. And this is a, this is a Muslim audience we're talking to at the moment, you know. Mm. So when I say Muslim, I'm talking about, you know, black Muslims, Asian Muslims, any sort of Muslim, even English Muslim. Like it's not a problem. Yeah. It's it's the what what we are in a society that is not. Uh, we are guests here. You know you, what I'm trying to is say? that true though? Because that's, they that's the way I see it. Yeah, um, th I think. Maybe I, I see it that way as well, but I don't think that that's a healthy way to see it if you live it's in the not, UK, but what especially. I, what I'm trying to say is like, we are guests anywhere at this day and age. Honestly, I think we're yeah, guests perhaps, in any country yeah, in the world. You can say because, that, yeah. because, we, because when we want to pray, uh, when we want to pray Eid Salah outside, we have to ask somebody's permission. When we want to do the Eden, we have to ask somebody's permission. When we want to open the message again, I mean, that message thing is a bit of a different thing. Everyone has to do that. But, that, but it's, it's all of this thing. Like when we want to get halal meat, we have to flip in. It's all this permission, permission, permission when the upper hand is better than the lower hand. Like we're asking non-Muslims for favors, bro. Why do I have to ask my non-Muslim boss for aid off? Or why do I have to ask my mm. non-Muslim, do you know what I mean, whatever, to go to Jumu'ah or to go and pray? Or to, do you understand? Like you're constantly a guest yeah. in someone else's but, house. But then you could also say that in a Muslim country, you might also have to... Uh, struggle to make changes because you won't always be True. able to just leave isn't it so True. in the uk you might be struggling to uh for people to just accept that i'm a muslim i live here uh i'm part of this country i know i'm a minority i know it's not the dominant culture here but this is who i am in a muslim country you might be arguing for uh, other things whatever it is uh maybe maybe uh more nitty-gritty things but you're yeah, still course. so but no matter where you go, you're, you know, you're, you're going to want to try and improve the situation, isn't it? It's almost like over there, I don't know, maybe I'm watering it down, but over there mm. in Muslim countries, uh, mm. you're arguing to practice Islam. Mm -hmm. You're not arguing to be a Muslim or identify as a Muslim. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Here, yeah. it's almost like you're arguing for the identity. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you know, mm. and it's that pressure, actually. Like, here is a deep pressure, bro. It's like that pressure that makes Muhammad's into Mo's. Do you know what I mean? That's the pressure, bro. That um, Mohammed into Mo pressure. Exactly. <laughs> That's bro. a hashtag right there. It's a bit long. Um, but. <laughs> but you know, at least you can be Mohammed up in you know mm. any Muslim country. Yeah, yeah. The way I see it, though, to be honest with you, um, we're getting into a bit of another topic. But the way I see it is, all that is coming to the Muslim world, and so mm. um, whether you want to be on the front line in the West. Um, or you want to uh, go, you know, you're in the Muslim world and you're kind of preparing for the what's coming. Either way, you're kind of on the front line, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, um, you can't, nobody, you know, people aren't going to, it's hard, actually. Like, this is a society that leaders and predominantly most, most individuals aren't going to accept everything that the deen has, you know. Yeah. So... 
you are going to have to, mm. if you want that, if you want mm. to be on those front lines, you're going to be met with some questions sometimes or some, you know, where it's like, what do you pick? Do you pick to be loud and proud a hundred percent about your Dean mm. and face the wrath of, uh, of, 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 you know, rejection, or are you just going to do you, you know? Mm. Um, because you could sit here hey, and, and this is like, be honest this is one of the things that i always get a bit like i worry about muslims that get in this space because i'm like let's talk about racism yeah you get on the front lines of fighting against racism like we should be like we should be the leaders of that but yeah. then within that black lives matter movement you've got the, the, the gay rights you've got trans rights you've got uh i don't know certain elements of feminism you've got all these mm. things that yeah. is going to be questionable to islam so yeah. then hey pass the mic over speak about um speak about gay rights now go on <laughs> You've done such a good job. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You've done such a good job about racism. So come on, keep mm. it keep it up. Yeah. And then you're just stuck like, oh, uh, I guess. Yeah. And then people have we've seen it. We've seen it, yeah. I think. Yeah. When Muslims are like, instead of being solid about what they believe in and, and respectful, I think, the key is to be respectful, yes. but be solid but be about what you believe. Clear, very clear, yes. Yeah, very mm. clear about what you believe. And that's without good for trying everyone. to cause offense. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, you start cutting corners, bend this way, bend that way. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Actually, forget about that part of the dean. I'm just going to focus on what people like to hear. Yeah, you know? yeah. Maslaha and there you go. Yeah. And there you go. You're, yeah. you've, you've, drowned. Mm. you've drowned. You've drowned in it all. Bro, I want to I wanna take it. Let, wait, let me just summarize what we've said just in case. Because sometimes I feel like maybe what I said was muddled or whatever. But, you know, what, what I'm kind of saying so far, what I've said is that, um, uh, of course, uh, I understand there's actually deep... Um, racism in many countries in the world uh and it's more the problem i feel is more the structural side of it rather than this just superficial stuff right and then i also said i, w I wish we wouldn't be such um sheep and just follow but we would take our own initiative to fight for our own values and part of those values is that you know we don't accept racism in islam mm. um and and to actually do something about it, right? So like you're saying about integrating into the police force, for example, uh, or for example, just telling your cousin that what he said wasn't cool kind of thing, right? Uh, and just taking the, the flack for that, you know, if you get uh, resistance and just sticking to, to the word, right? Um, and then we talked about being victim doesn't really help anyone. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. So I don't want uh, to be misunderstood. But now, bro, here's a big question which I have when it comes to this topic, which... I, I honestly think anybody who's sincere, they would actually have this question. And to, to, to the surface level thinkers, they'll think it's a ridiculous question. But I actually, I'm unclear on what racism actually is, okay? And I'll give you an example, right? So uh, calling somebody, you know, the N-word, is that like, is that always racist, right? That's one mm. thing. Another thing is like the what happened with uh, George Floyd, where I think... Um, because he was using fake money, the lady called the police on him. She probably did that because he was black, not because, you know, because he was mm -hmm. black, not because he was just because mm -hmm. he's doing something illegal, right? Um, right. That's the story anyway. Uh, but then the, there's a very gray area, which I'm confused about personally, where stereotypes. So yeah. are stereotypes racist? You know, like it's, I yeah. think of, uh, I don't know, I think of South Asians as being very good at maths, right? Yeah. Is that racist now? And I think yeah. the mainstream view is that, oh, yeah, all stereotypes are racist. But uh, personally, I, I, I can't agree with that because stereotypes and shortcuts and, um, you know, uh, cliches and stuff, it's part of how we think. It's, it's, it's what is necessary to, to live in the world, right? If every second I have to recheck if gravity is still there, I won't do anything. Uh, it's, a, it's a shortcut that I always assume gravity is there, right? So likewise... Um, I don't know when. Uh, when I see, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. When I see a big, a big guy, I'm playing rugby, and there's a big guy coming at me. I'm gonna brace myself differently than if a little guy is, right? Like it's just all yeah, basic yeah, stuff, stuff, right? Yeah. Right. So, where do stereotypes turn into racism, Stereo and do they ever turn into racism? Stereotypes are the thing that are alive and well, you know. And people mm. ask me because of what I do for a living. Mm. They're like, okay, do you see racism, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. And I, 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 honest truth, I just say I don't see the active racism. I don't see it like you mm. think it exists. However, stereotyping, mm. yeah. Like I, stereotyping is yeah. every, like you're, you're, everyone, you're, you're every, saying you wouldn't say that that is racism. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I would say it's race. Race may be an element mm. 
that combines with many other things to mm. create this whole picture of somebody, you mm. know? Um, so if you've got an individual that is of a certain ethnic background that dresses a certain way, that listens to certain music, that does all these certain things, mm. and, and this is something I did want to touch upon, mm. but it's very controversial. However, that's what kind we of what we do out here. Yeah, I'm going to say it anyway, we can't popular, popularize the media and the content that puts, that makes, that, what's it, uh, perpetuates racist stereotypes. Like, how can you have, mm. I'm, you know, I'm going to talk about it. In the, there was like some music awards or something, right? Mm. And there's this famous summer song going around by this rapper or whatever. Um, it's a big, like, I know, it's a song about like, F this and shoot that and kill this guy and blah, blah, blah. And flip and kill this N word and kill that N word. It's black guy singing it or whatever. Mm. And then, and then they thought what well, they did, bro, the song came out before black lives matter. Then the black lives matter thing happened. George Floyd died. And then because of this event going, he added another verse to the beginning of the song that was spoke about, spoke about this. Yeah. Black lives thing. And really? he added a video clip to him being put with a knee on his neck, uh, as like a message. Oh. And then, and I thought, oh, he's changed the whole song because of this movement, uh -huh. you know? And I thought, oh, he's changed the whole song because of this movement. That's pretty powerful. No, it was just that first verse. And then the rest of the song was the same. And what was it? Kill this N-word, shoot that N-word, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah, my blah, God. Blah. And I just thought, this, this is a problem. Like, See, I don't, that, that's I don't, the definition of superficial change. This, exactly. Like, mm. this, is, this is slavery of the mind, bro. Yes. You cannot, you yes. cannot, look, you cannot talk about being stereotyped you cannot talk about being stereotyped and then be singing about drugs, killing people, and, and then also be listening to that and promoting that. Like mm. that just, and I think that is a trap that people have fallen into. And it's not just black people. It's just any ethnic minority seems to find that stuff attractive to listen to and promote and blah, blah, blah. Like you can't be driving around in your car listening to that kind of stuff, mm. right? No matter what you are, who you are, black, white, whatever, because that's what happens. And then not be treated like, like a suspected criminal or you're up to no good. Do you understand? Like you mm. can't ex like people, law enforcement are human beings susceptible to the same sort of stuff. You know, if you heard me driving in my car or promoting some sort of like girly song, bro, you would think that I'm some, I'm like a certain way inclined. Mm. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? Like that would be your stereotype mm. of me based on what I'm promoting or what I'm yeah. listening to, what I'm into. Right. It's the same thing. Actually, like some of this music, most of this music like in this genre is like, I'm going to kill this person. I'm going to shoot this person. I'm going to stab this mm. person. You're, I'm better than you, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And, and then we're like, oh, why am I getting treated like this? Or, why am, and I'm not saying this is across the board, but mm. I'm saying it's a very, very important thing. We can't have our cake and eat it. We can't just be like, look, why is me? I'm being targeted, but also uh, shoot this, you know, push this drug. I, I make, I make mm. money selling this. And come on, like, and this is it. This is the, this is where, the intelligence stops and we're just victimizing like no if you want to be intelligent you want to be about this movement be about the change in everything you do not just about you know how can i have you know how can you have artists musicians especially the musicians because we live in a, a, an era of music and whatever mm -hmm. entertainers that promote violence stereotypes against them their people and their background actually it's like me a muslim doing movies about always being a terrorist and, and, and suicide bombing. And then when, when, you know, when some Islamophobic event happens, I'm the first on stage to say, this is wrong. This shouldn't happen. You know, we're mm. being stereotyped, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's more to us than this, but I'm, pro I'm promoting that message. Mm. Come on. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what your background mm. is. That is not mm. right. Mm. It's not right. Mm. Mm. So, so let's say, you know, let's say, uh, let's say it was me, someone who looks like me. And I'm listening to that kind of music. And because of that, I'm kind of suspected that might be up to no good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm young. Uh, I'm not black, but I'm young. I'm listening to this music. Uh, I've got a friend in the car. Um, like that stereotype. Okay, people that listen to this music, you know, are more likely to be up to no good, right? So should I actually... Yanni, is that fair then at that point to say, you know, stop and search me or something because of... No, I mean, no, everything has criticism. It, you know, the stop and search thing is criticism. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been in situations where I'm like, why are we doing that? Like, do we need to do that? That's not, that's yeah. not, I don't see the point. Like that, yeah. I don't feel, but you know, it's up to every individual and their own justification at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You can't stop somebody from doing something if they think that it's justified, unless it's clearly like not justified, whatever. Yeah. Like, um, you know, 
certain things like being stopped about being stopped and searched just because you smell cannabis is very controversial. Like it's not something I'd agree with. I don't think it, someone could be stopped and searched. Even though on paper you could argue, yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like it's not enough. You know, mm. I need to know something. I need to be, I need something really like, if I, if, you know, if a stop and search is going to happen, I want to be like, okay, this person's got something on them. Like, I want to know, I want to really think this person got something on them. Another thing that gets ignored a lot is about reports. Like, law enforcement react mm. to reports that they receive. It's rare that they just come across something. Right. You know, sometimes right. they do. Sometimes, a lot of times, yeah, they might just stop something. But we, you know, law enforcement act upon information that they receive. Mm. If that rem- information you receive is from a racist individual who has said, I just saw this black person drug dealing and he's wearing a red jacket and you mm. go and stop the first red jacket black individual you see and you search them. Oh, that would be doing that based on the inf- yeah, yeah, but that, but that's not reasonable if that individual doesn't know the information, you know? Yeah. So then when you say to the individual, well, this is the description we've received and they're like, oh yeah, of course, there's always a description. Okay, now you're going to play it. Okay, all right. You, mm. you want to go down that road, that's fine. Yeah, that you seems know? fair enough done. though, yeah. yeah. But, but, but what, also- what about this though, bro, yeah? These um, these rappers that uh, make this make this type of music, right? They're making a lot of money, and they're getting money from a lot of people, right? There are a lot of people listening to it, right? It's the now, slave I'll, trade again, bro. Yeah, but I'm I'm what I'm saying is in the UK, in the US, more than half, like way more than half of the people that are paying for these shows or for the music or whatever. You don't really buy music anymore, but you get the point. They are white people, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Therefore, what would be expected is more white people who are listening to that music should be getting stopped, isn't it? Right? Mm. Like, if we're going to do stereotypes, let's do stereotypes based on data. That's what I'm trying to say. I know, but what I'm saying is that people don't, law enforcement don't act, law enforcement, the individual, not the organization, yeah. the individual doesn't act on data, doesn't act on numbers. Yeah, so should it, wouldn't that be the right way to stereotype? No, it, it goes back, it goes mm. back. It would be, it might be the right way to stereotype, but it goes mm. back to this cultural thing again. Because oh. you've got a culture of individuals that can identify with a white person more than they can identify with an other. Yeah. Do you understand? And this is something that isn't just a made up thing, a made up phenomenon. There's something that exists. I remember even studying in criminology where uh, people that are from a certain cultural background can easily can find it easier to remember to even remember faces from that culture. Okay. Mm-hmm. White people can remember faces better of other white people. Right. As opposed to someone who's Asian, someone who's black, someone who's Arab. And mm. it was the same across the board from other cultures. Mm. If you're a black, this is a study. I, I wish I could find it. I'm going to look it up again. Because mm. I remember it, it completely fascinated me when I was in, um, when I was, you know, studying in university. Mm. Where they, they basically said that this is something that exists. Almost like a, it's a natural thing that, I'm not going to say it was an evolutionary benefit. But it's something mm. that is a natural phenomenon within us. Is that, yes. you know, if you were, if you were uh, I don't know. If you were from, like, you know, from a not Asia, but you know, if you were Arab, for example, you would find it easier to recognize anyone, like to remember faces of people. Sure, that were yeah. Arab. If you were black, you find so that's it why people to say that black all faces. Chinese look the same. That's it. So that sounds like a racist statement, right? But yeah. also, that has been flipped. There's been comments from Chinese people that have said it about white people. All white people look the same. Mm. You know, mm. Achi, I know this happens for a fact because i don't know if you've ever been to a new job and you've got like a few you've got a few white males that look they have similar hair whatever and you just get their names mixed up all the time right (laughs) just always do you always Mm. do but then if that was the other way around and they got two black people's names mixed up or two arab people's names mixed up all the time they're like oh why be racist not realizing that's not active racism that is something that is it's a cult it's this cultural thing within us Mm. so what I'm trying to say is if you haven't ultimately what I'm trying to say about this is I think we should just sort of conclude our thoughts a little bit now is that the reason I think me and you we've come at this this mind high six episode we've come at this angle talking about stuff that hasn't been spoken about ultimately we could have sat here and just spoke about how racism is wrong like yeah that's what everybody's done pointless yeah. you know that's just a bit pointless like I, I would we, hope everybody uh, exactly already knows we, we yeah. what we think about that I don't know I'm no I'm, I'm making the disclaimer I don't know why. I, don't, I just feel like my our audience is smarter than that. They don't need us to tell them that, yeah, we, we think that anything that raises awareness of racism, whatever, should, is fine. That's great. We're talking mm. about things that aren't spoken about. So that's what mm. ultimately I want to raise. Yeah, yeah. Um, but ultimately, 
uh, what I'm trying to say is that everybody has their part to play. And my ultimate message personally is that if you are, if you have a gripe or something with an organization or with any sort of part of the system, then you need to engage in that system. You can't just mm. be shouting from, a, from far away. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can't be telling leaders that you don't like, that you don't trust to change things for you. That doesn't, mm. you know. You need, to, you, you need to force their hand because yeah. they're not moving the hand voluntarily. So you need to force yeah. their hand. And, it's and like you need to make... when we were colonized, we had to force them to leave. Why would they voluntarily leave? Yeah. And, we, and we need to be like, if you're going to live here and this mm. is your long term and this is what you care about and this is systems that affect you, then you need to be a player in that system. You need to inter inject your culture and your background into that system. Um, and there's things available. Like, there's so many things like even, even law enforcement, bro. There is, um, there is a, what are they called? Um, review boards for certain things. So for example, every stop and search should be recorded and every uh, recorded like paperwork wise, but also should be policy. It's not law, but policy in certain police forces that it should be recorded on your camera as well. Mm. Right. So, but there's also review panels for all of that stuff. There's like, I, I believe my uncle does stuff like that. He's basically part of, um, He's external. He's independent from the police. He goes into prisons. He goes into uh, uh, custody centers and basically makes sure that people are being treated the way they should be treated. Black and ethnic minority, Muslim, whatever. Like he's part of those people. There's, there's review panels that are black mm. and ethnic minority review panels that mm. we've even got here that I've even sat in, bro, that they will basically do a random selection of, I don't know, five stop and search videos be like, okay, let's critique this. Mm. So, so now pe police officers know that they could be held accountable for something they do wrong. And that's it. Yeah. It's about accountability. So it's yeah. about, okay, did this hold up to scrutiny? Were all the standards met? And then you go and look, bro, you, you know, you need to be part of the system. If you've got issues with police, mm. then break it down. Say what you've got an issue with. If there's a certain legislation, there's a certain procedure, okay, identify that, campaign mm. for that, get that change, or mm. be part of those bodies that, that, that police that, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. if you want to be, there are things that are out there already that people have strived to get there people who are black, ethnic, minority, whatever, have strived to get these systems in place. Support what's been, support movements that already exist. Support things that have already existed and promote that. Because at the moment we're sitting here thinking that everything is against us when we're discounting the efforts done by generations and generations before us, the hard work that they put in, you know? It's, anyway, mm, mm. so there's that sort of stuff as well, but. Mm. Bro, you know, uh, I, I couldn't end without going a bit into this a little bit more, just a little more about, what is racism, right? So uh, in the, amongst Muslims, we always bring up the, it's almost become a bit of a cliche, a bit of a joke, the whole, you won't let your daughter marry a black man, right? Yeah. Um, now, what is your take on that? Like, is, is that always racist? Is it racist? Can it be racist? Um, what, what's your thoughts? Um, if it's isolated, so if the, the black or the, the, the race element is an isolated issue. For example, you've got preference to marry an Arab because, um, because they speak the same language, you understand the same culture, blah, blah, blah. Like that's, un I think that's understandable. Mm -hmm. However, the only outlier is that they're black. Oh, that's my issue. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Sure, like yeah. I, I respect preference. Yeah, I respect yeah. preference in family building. Yeah. I th think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. I think, yeah, you wanted to marry a North African because you're a North African and you feel like that's what you want to raise your family. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Don't see an issue with that. I think when I was younger, when I was younger and a bit more, I don't know, naive, I used to have issues with that. But now mm. I'm like, no, I'm a bit older now. I understand actually that's an important factor in any sort of family thing. However, if the isolated characteristic is the person's skin color, mm. that's where it's like, yeah, that's yeah. not okay. That's yeah, not like, okay. so for example, if they're, if they're Algerian, but they're black. Yeah. And then you're yeah, like, yeah. no, yeah, oh, that's yeah. obviously just for, for the racial yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, and when I say isolated, I mean, it could be something that just, you can tell it's leaning more because they're black. Yeah. It's not because of yeah. where they're from. And, and even if you think about it, a black person, like when I say, again, black is just too broad, but uh, a Senegalese person would probably prefer to marry a, a Senegalese person or their daughter to marry a Senegalese person or at least someone from like West Africa, right? Mm. So it's, it's, it's normal. I think, I think that's very normal. Um, the only, the time for me when it becomes racist, when, it, when it's like the only reason is because of the skin color. But even then, Yanni, there might be a, a case to say that they just... So imagine somebody like who grew up in Pakistan 
and uh, then maybe they, let's say they live their whole life in Pakistan. And then, you know, again, somebody wants to marry their daughter and they're black. Um, black people, they might not be racist. Like they might not think black person is bad or he'll treat my daughter bad or whatever. It's just new to me. It's just uh, weird, right? Uncomfortable. So in that case, I don't know if the person would be racist at that point, really. I think the racism comes in more when it's like, oh, because black is bad. Right? Yeah, but I also think a lot of people aren't blunt about how they feel. That no, no, of course. From, uh, we're trying yeah. to, yeah, we're trying to uh, assume we can really dive deep and understand what's yeah. going on in their head. Um, but I, I just, I understand that there is an element of being discom uh, of discomfort, right? But I think as generally as a Muslim society, we should actually remove that discomfort completely, ideally. That would definitely mm -hmm. be the ideal situation. But uh, I'm just wary of, uh, sh you know, tell labeling things very quickly to be, to be racist when they might not be. When, like we said already, there are very, very troubling things happening which are purely racist, you know, and really mm -hmm. damaging. And so that's really where the uh, focus should be uh, in terms of what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, Jazakallah khairan, bro. Um, I'm sure maybe the, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm sure, I think we're assuming the stuff we're saying is controversial, but I think, Alhamdulillah, I hope what we've said is just kind of logical, it makes sense. Um, and if it doesn't, then definitely get in touch with us and question what we've said, because I would really appreciate that because, you know, none of us are kind of experts. And Muhammad has some good experience in, in the in policing and how that works, but we're not uh, experts in. Yeah, and, and we have loads of experience in uh, experiencing like racism or whatever. But what I want, what yeah, I want to say as well is also like a disclaimer: is like mm. even my experience in law enforcement isn't mm. law enforcement is such an American term isn't <laughs> hasn't engaged with that many black and ethnic minority people because where I live there isn't many the population yeah. is so low it's a minority that in the end. it's mm. such a, such a minority here mm. Mm. that I barely even wit like I barely had any engagement with myself let mm. alone witnessed it yeah. do you know what I mean so it's like yeah like people ask me those questions because they think of my experience I'm like mm. I'll be honest I, I haven't seen anything because we just haven't had that contact whilst if you ask somebody in London maybe it might be completely different you know um, and that's where some of the gripes exist up in these areas where there's bigger proportions of uh, ethnic minorities. So, mm. Um, mm. so yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to say I'm biased. I'm trying to say I haven't experienced that. However, I do see some structures that can be questioned, can be changed. Ultimately, mm. the, the, the word my mom loves is the most, uh, expose yourself to other cultures, mm. not just other cultures, but expose yourself to organizations and like, there are volunteer things. There are ways you can get involved. There are mm. ways that you can observe at a closer level. You know, if yeah. you not just through the television and documentaries. Like, if you're about this life, then be about this life. If you want to, it's like that broke. I don't know if you've ever seen him. I know I just said not on television, but I should. I think everyone should watch this. There's a there's a black guy that um, he goes to KKK rallies okay. and he talks to them and he engages with them mm. and it's powerful, bro. Mm. And I think that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's the kind of move you need to make. You need to go and expose yourself to these boogeymen that you, you, you built in your head that sometimes are like, this organization is all bad, mm. right? No, you need, you need to go and actually see for yourself, mm. right? Go and see the day-to-day. -day. Mm. Go and try and expose yourself to that kind of stuff mm. and then see what mm. you can do, where the changes can be made. Mm. Yeah. You can't change stuff which you don't understand. True, yeah. And you have to empathize with people, even if you see them as the oppressor and maybe mm. they're at the they're in wrong and they're mm. the they're the dominant culture and this and that. Still understand them, right? Understand yeah, where they're coming from. Yeah. Uh okay. End it with this question. Have you ever been racist or potentially felt maybe you have that inside you somehow? Oh, good question. I don't know. See I have been, I remember being people being racist to me as a young, young child, like in reception. Mm. Like I remember getting, because I, I was born in Essex, you know, I think I was the only ethnic minority person in the whole school, possibly. I remember people like calling me poo poo face and stuff like that. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's pathetic. But, and I remember constantly getting that. I remember like even in primary school here. So I was like nine, 10 people saying that, you know, Arab smell and all this other stuff and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, At least they knew what an Arab was. 
Yeah. If I was ever racist, do you know what? You know, if I think I was ever racist, it was probably a racist to white people. Mm. You know, yeah. I think that's, I think, and I think a lot of Muslims still do that today. Or a lot mm. of ethnic minorities still do that today. I think we do have this whole, oh, it's fine. Like we can be mm. racist to white people. Yeah. Because, because white people are racist to us. Mm. Well, now we now you just made a generalization. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and things, things would be like, and I'll be honest, Ahi, it exists, bro, because mm. like my wife is half English, you know, her mother is white. My son is quarter English. You know, my kids, so both my kids, mm. quarter English. So I'm very aware of that now. Mm. So even now I'll be sitting in a, a, you know, sitting in a gathering of Muslims and stuff and they'll say, yeah, but you know, white people, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I'll be very conscious of that. Yes. I'll be very, very conscious mm. of that now, mm. which I wasn't before because mm. I did this othering. We've got white mm. reverts, Ahi, we've got white Muslims and it doesn't mm. even matter. We've got white people that are, you know, there's more white people in the Black Lives Matter protests in my city than there were black people, just because of the numbers, not because you know black people don't care, because we don't have that many black people here. Yeah. So, just people that you know, amazing, great people, whatever. But we we, we fall victim to that. We mm. need to be better than that which we yes. despise. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Myself, uh, I'm probably similar to you. Like, if if I was ever racist, it was not to black people. That's for sure. Um, I, I actually feel quite close to black people. I think it's, it's because I consider myself African. It's because I've had uh, close friends who were like West African and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of Muslims in Africa, of course. Um, and I, I always, I don't know, I feel closer to, uh, to, to Africans than to, let's say, uh, South Asians for some reason. Mm. Uh, I think maybe it's culturally, um, there, there's, it's closer. Um, and of course, in, in Algeria, I have uh, black people, but I'm talking about non-Arab black people. Anyway, uh, that, that's, that's what I feel. I, I, it's, it's always potential to be there, but this is why in Islam, we have to do tezkir. We have to clean ourselves uh, mm. of shirk firstly, and then uh, all these other bad traits. Okay, bro. Very good episode. Uh, remember, if you, have, uh, your, you want your input um, talked about on the next episode or something, then go to mindheistpodcast.com. Uh, and just submit either an email uh, or an anonymous question, and then we will deal with it. So if you feel we said something wrong, or if you agree with us, or you want to add further, then please do that. That'll be really good for the next episode, inshallah. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks, Muhammad, for the good input. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, shadu wa la anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk, salam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.